So nobody, when I asked you what you thought of Africa, nobody said the origins of humanity. Nobody said the first people came from Africa. Nobody said the first writing came from Africa, or the first farming came from Africa, or where Africa, Africa is a place where people first domesticated um, fire, where the first tools came from. Africa is where people first built houses, first had farming. As far as we know, first you had metallurgy. All of these things come out of Africa. Africa is where people first stood on two feet, first played music, first buried the dead, first had philosophy and religion, astronomy, morality, spirituality. All of these things first come from Africa. But nobody said anything like that because that's not the image of Africa that we get from television and the mass media. When I was a kid, my image of Africa was of a native, I never quite figured out what a native was, but a native always had a big bushy afro, like I used to have, believe it or not. I know that's hard for you to imagine, but I had a big one, I was proud of it. And these natives with these big afros had bones in their noses, and they would have a spear in their hand, not a javelin, but a spear, and they would be running through the jungle, not the rainforest, but the jungle, and they would be, and they would be saying, Ugu Gabuga, that was their language, that was all they ever said. And they would be hunting, sorry, for a Christian missionary, and if they were lucky enough to find a missionary, they would throw him in a boiling cauldron of water, and that would be dinner. That was my image of Africa. And I didn't want to have anything to do with Africa. In fact, when I was young, if you had called me an African, even if you had called me black, those were fighting words. If you called me an African, the best thing for you to have done was to stand back. It was more than likely I was going to swing on you because I knew nothing about Africa. And I was ashamed of my African heritage. I'm afraid to say, or sorry to say, that many African Americans even now are ashamed of their African heritage. And that's really pathetic. Why is this important? Because the past is not dead and history is not finished. As I say over and over again, what you do for yourself depends on what you think of yourself. And what you think of yourself depends on what you know of yourself. And what you know of yourself depends on what you have been told. So if you are told that your history begins in a jungle or on a slave ship, that will really condition you psychologically as to how you see yourself and what your capabilities are, what your capacities are. And so history plays a very, very important function. All strong people emphasize their history all the time. Weak people don't. African people, for the most part, begin, even on the continent of Africa, begin their history with the European intrusion. In South Africa, where I've lectured and spent a little time, I've met people who say their ancestors came there 40,000 years ago. And yet in the classrooms, they start in 1652 when the Dutch came. In Ghana, another country I like very much, they begin their history in 1484 when the Portuguese came. It's like Africans didn't do anything before Europeans came and thrust themselves upon them. In Uganda, probably my favorite country in Africa right now, and I think I've been to 25 countries in Africa, they start their history around 1813 when Stanley Livingston and the English came. It's like we don't have a history before Europe, the European presence. So let's see if we can change our perception. Now we are going to spend a good portion of the evening in a part of Africa that not everybody thinks is African and that is a country that we now call Egypt. Egypt is in Africa. As far as I know, it has always been in Africa. I was there for the 14th time about three weeks ago, and it was in Africa at that time. And I have not read a, a USA Today report or CNN that said Egypt has been moved to another spot. And the people who built Egyptian civilization were Africans too. We know that because people who came from Greece, for example, like Herodotus, described the people as having black skin and woolly hair. He was very unequivocal about that. And we know they were African based on the biblical evidence. You know, in the, a biblical uh, genealogy, the biblical table of nations, tells us that Egypt, or what they call Mishram, was the second oldest son of Ham, the black progenitor of humankind. And we know they were African because people have done analyses of the language, and they've done analysis of the blood samples, and the physical anthropology, and on and on and on. There was a big symposium in Cairo in 1974, sponsored by UNESCO, and it was decided, it, the, the point was made that we were going to decide once and for all who the ancient Egyptians were, as if there was some doubt about it. 
And so they had a big conference and all of these big time Egyptologists were invited. And most of them just told the same old stuff that a group of dark skinned white people came from somewhere, presumably Europe, and they were drawn to Africa like a magnet, and they went to Africa and built the pyramids. They didn't build any pyramids in Europe now, and they didn't build any along the way, but when, apparently when they got to Africa, they were inspired, and they started to build these fantastic monuments. Or some people have even argued that extraterrestrials have come down from the sky, you know, beam me down, Scotty, an episode of Star Trek, and gone to Egypt and build these fantastic monuments. So that was basically what was presented at this conference, except for two African scholars a man named Theophile Obenga from Congo Brazzaville, and a man named Sheikh Ant Job from Senegal. And they just came and presented, a, they showed ancient Egypt in a vastly different light. And they presented all the evidence that I cited and a lot more, which has been published, by the way. This is not obscure information. But they also introduced something new, and that was called the melanin dosage test. And they were able to take or show samples of the epidermis of royal Egyptian mummies in France, I don't know if it's the Louvre or uh, the Museum of Man in Paris. And they were able to take samples of the epidermis, the outer layer of the skin, and put them, these samples or these fragments in a solution under a microscope. And you could see the melanin, the blackness, gleaming right back at you. Basically irrefutable stuff. And one or two of the delegates, I think one guy, perhaps even from the Sudan, was so frustrated and exasperated by this, he, they didn't expect this. And he jumped up and down and said, even if you can prove the ancient Egyptians were black, they were still white. And that is the level that a lot of people operate on. So that no matter what you say, they've already closed their minds like you close a window or a book for fear that a new idea might come in. Even now, there's an issue of National uh, Geographic that's circulating that completely ignores the African origin of Egyptian civilization. They concentrate on another part of the Nile Valley called Nubia. But there, the implication is that the Nubians were simply a backwater, that they received the impetus for civilization from the Egyptians themselves, who they assumed to be white.